In the world of capitalism, companies set the expectations. If you buy a Ferrari, you expect it to be fast. If the Ferrari barely works, people will not be happy. Hi, I'm stupid. This applies to gaming as well. When a AAA game studio prices their new game at $80 and they give us this, players will not be happy. So let's look back at some times game studios made players really not happy. <laughs> Starting with the most recent tragedy to hit the gaming market, we have Overwatch 2. Released on October 4th of last year, Overwatch 2 was supposed to be a revamped sequel to Blizzard's wildly successful Overwatch. Except it wasn't. Teams went from 6v6 to 5v5, they had outrageous skin prices. 25 goddamn dollars. New characters locked behind paywalls, but most notably, PvE. Overwatch 2 promised to have a new PvE mode that was going to be a co-op experience that saw players fight their way through a full story-driven campaign. Something fans have been asking for since the original game's release. This was the main point for re-releasing as Overwatch 2, cause it was kind of the only thing that wasn't in the original Overwatch. But sure enough, three weeks ago, PvE was scrapped entirely. With executive producer Jared Noose stating, The effort required to pull all of that together into a Blizzard quality experience that we can ship to you is huge, and there really is no end in sight. And with that, Overwatch fans lost a lot of faith in Blizzard and Overwatch, and mix in some concerning controversies within the company, and they're going to have to do a lot more than making the game free to play to bring players back. I never want to play it again. Coming off an amazing launch of The Witcher 3, CD Projekt Red was about to outdo themselves with their long-anticipated title, Cyberpunk 2077. An ambitious open-world RPG set in the dystopian cyberpunk-themed Night City. It was easily the most hyped game of 2020, getting over 8 million pre-orders. The game was promised to be the most realistic open-world game ever, with a branching storyline, the choices you make will shape your story, day and night cycles for NPCs, every building explorable, endless activities, and Keanu Reeves. You're breathtaking! But upon release of the game, those 8 million pre-orders would quickly become refunds. I'm gonna ask for a refund. The game was beyond broken. You're certified bug free. Say so you'll take this and remember the dosage. Two weeks. From constant crashes to rendering issues, terrible AI, non-existent physics, every building locked, and too many bugs to count. If you played on Xbox One or PS4, you were lucky if the game ran at all. In fact, it was so unplayable that PlayStation had to take it off of their store completely and both them and Xbox offered refunds, which went against their own policies. <laughs> oh, wow. A lot of people know the horrors of this game at launch by now. So I'll actually end on a good note by saying that people who still play say it's in a much better state in 2023, although it took almost three extra years to get here. Now this one hits close to home for me. Bungie dominated the early 2000s with their Halo series. At the start of 2010, however, Bungie would partner with one of the biggest plagues to the gaming world, Activision. Upon partnering with Activision, Halo ownership was given to Microsoft and would be ruined from there on out by 343 Industries. The UI in this game is fucking broken. I crash every two seconds. While Bungie went to go work on Destiny, a sci-fi MMO FPS set in the distant future. Fast forward to its release in 2014, and it was a very successful game. Although it didn't take players long to notice a big issue. If you did a little exploring in certain worlds, you could glitch into entirely complete parts of the map that are empty of content. Why? It turned out that Bungie had already put the DLC areas on the disc at launch. You can see the same areas in the trailers. And how much was this DLC? 20 to 40 dollars. 
So people were spending an extra $40 for content they already had. And Bungie says it was to make smaller downloads, but I think we all know it was just for more money. There's a lot of other smaller problems we had with Destiny, like the loot cave, useless exotics, horrible PvP balancing, and all endgame players pretty much looking the same due to few customization options, but players could ignore these as the game was overall really good. The release of Destiny 2, however, is a different story. Remember all those hours you put into getting max level and the extra DLCs we bought in Destiny 1? Well, they're gone everyone's stats, as well as wiping almost all of the content added in the original Destiny. But don't worry, because there was one thing that carried over. Microtransactions. And they are everywhere. See those bright engrams in the shop? They're basically the only way to get cool loot at launch. So players had to make a choice. Pay a hefty amount for bright engrams or grind and get one each time you leveled. Except there was a problem. Bungie was secretly throttling XP, so people had to gain double the XP required to level up. That the game did in fact scale down XP gains. Hopefully incentivizing you to buy from the Eververse. And when Bungie was caught, they decided that to fix the problem, they would simply double the XP requirement. This is when players realized that Destiny 2 had become nothing more than a cash grab with Eververse and would be more and more apparent with every DLC they added. New endgame content and raids would subsequently be locked behind every new DLC, and those DLCs are getting more and more expensive. For example, if you've played since Destiny 1 and have gotten every DLC all the way to Lightfall, the newest expansion in Destiny 2, You've spent over $750 on DLCs alone, and that's not even including Eververse. And the worst part is Destiny 2 has begun downsizing the game by just removing early game content that those players have already paid for. So although it's a pretty good game in comparison to other games on this list, it's the greedy nature of Bungie now that has made fans disappointed in the state of Destiny 2. DICE saw major success with their over-the-top, realistic FPS series, Battlefield. They were the main competitors with the Call of Duty franchise constantly sparking debates over which was the better series. But that would all change with DICE's release of Battlefield 5. Like I said, Battlefield was a series known for its realistic and brutal depictions of war. So when they released the trailer of the supposed World War II era shooter and has soldiers with colored face paint, advanced prosthetics, and female soldiers, fans were not impressed. This caused a whole debate of fans who were appalled at the lack of historical accuracy, which is what the games are known for, versus the developers who wanted to make their games more inclusive. Ultimately, this backlash was enough for game sales to not quite hit the mark. However, this game would look like a masterpiece compared to their latest launch of Battlefield 2042. October 6th of 2021, the beta for Battlefield 2042 dropped, and it was a daunting experience to say the least. Terrible bullet registering, AI-filled lobbies, almost non-existent destruction, janky movement, horrible netcode, flying boats, and no scoreboard. I repeat, a multiplayer FPS game with no scoreboard. Don't worry though, DICE confirmed the beta was simply an older build of the game, and these issues would be sorted out at launch. They lied. The game launched November 19th, and all those problems were still there. To say the game was unplayable would be a huge understatement. Battlefield 2042 lost more than 80% of its player base in a month, and at one point had more people playing Battlefield 5. Over the following six months, they would actually manage to get the game to a playable state, but the damage was done. EA became desperate enough with talks of them switching the game to free to play to try and save whatever player base they could, but that never came to fruition. 
So Battlefield 2042 stays as another disappointing launch. Bethesda Game Studios is most well known for their innovative series like The Elder Scrolls and Fallout. After a very successful run with Fallout 4, Bethesda announced they were working on their most ambitious title to date, Fallout 76. A prequel to the rest of the series, Fallout 76 said to have 16 times the detail. Actually, I'm gonna let Todd do this for me. Have 16 times the detail. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. And this time it features all new rendering, lighting, and landscape technology, and even view distant weather systems across the map. And it's our biggest one yet. It was going to be a masterclass of video game engineering. Fast forward to launch, and oh god, it's unplayable. AIT posing on you, player speed tied to the FPS, voice chat always on. Hit Tell escape. your mom to shut up! <laughs> I'm trying to fucking play Fallout! The infamous dev room where players could get every item in the game. No NPCs, invincibility, crashes, laggy graphics. I could go on and on listing bugs and problems with the game, but that would take literal hours. What? Plus, someone already did that. But you know what wasn't bugged? The Atom Shop. So not only was it a broken game, but all of the customizable options were extremely overpriced, including skins that were free in their previous titles. The best way I can represent just how hated this game was is with the numbers. As of March 2020, Fallout 76 sold just under 2.6 million copies. Fallout 4, however, sold over 13 million. Right the now, game was an utter disappointment, and I haven't even talked about all of the controversy outside the game, like the collector's edition bag, class action lawsuits about refunds, and literally doxing their players. Internet Historian has an amazing video fully detailing its downfall, so if you haven't seen it already, I recommend giving it a watch. Whether these companies can turn themselves around or not, we will have to wait and see. But either way, I hope you enjoyed, hit subscribe and like the video on your way out, and thanks for watching.